Hey, what's going on guys? Josh Donnelly here with yet another pro theme cornerstone tutorial. And in today's video, we are going to take a look at how to create a basic sorting mechanism. So you'll notice here that if I say sort alphabetically, this all changes to alphabetical. If I say sort in reverse alphabetical, it changes. If I say sort by publish date, it changes. And while that seems very simple and there are plugins that can do this, Facet WP is a phenomenal plugin. Plugins just seem like overkill for something simple like this. And so this is done completely in pro. Before we dive into how to do that, um, a little explanation of what you're looking at here. This is a bogus uh, web app um, that I was just sort of testing the waters on to see if something like this was possible to create completely in pro. The good news is that it is. Uh, I guess the bad news is that's not what we're gonna be covering today. Maybe in a later video, we'll look at how to create a dashboard like this. Um, but let's go ahead and dive into the back end and see how we created our sorting mechanism. All right, so here we are on the back end, and we have a couple of elements and sections set up here, but what we're gonna go ahead and do just for the sake of this example is set everything up from scratch. So I'm just gonna build this right above all of this here. So let's go ahead and add a new section. And in this section here, uh, we are going to set this up as the entire section will be our looper provider. Now, uh, you know I like the query builder, but query strings are great for getting uh, custom queries set up. So within the query string here, we are going to tell it to pull our post type. So post underscore type equals, and in this case, this fake bogus app is called uh, brew up and the custom post type is on tap. So we'll say our post type equals on tap and posts per page because I want it to pull through everything equals negative one and order by. So what do we want it to order by? Uh, typically, you could put date or something like title in here, but we want this to be a dynamic value because we're going to control it later. So we're going to come in here and click on our dynamic content, search for our URL parameter, click on that. Now we can give this any key we want, we just need to be consistent, but for the sake of understanding the correlation with our query string here, we are going to put in order by, and then a fallback. So if there is no value for order by specified, how do we want our looper provider to respond? Well, in this case, let's just say, go ahead and sort it by title if nothing else is specified. It's almost like a default, okay? But now, even if it's pulling those through by, say, title, it doesn't know, do you want me to display them randomly by title or ascending by title or descending by title? So we need to specify that. So we're gonna say and order equals, and now we want another dynamic content value. So we're gonna come in here and search for our parameter again. And this one we'll just call order. And our fallback will just be ascending. So if the default for order by is title, and our default for order is ascending, then our default for this entire looper provi provider is pull through everything in ascending alphabetical order, A to Z. So that's our default, but then we can control things. And then for the sake of this tool here, and just because I think this is kind of cool, I also only wanted this tool to pull through the posts that were added by this specific user. So you could also come in here, this isn't really relevant to this tutorial, but hey, why not? And say, and author equals, and then pull up the dynamic content and look for the user ID and pop that in there. So now it's only go, it's going to pull all of the posts of the post type on tap that are associated with this specific author, so the author that's trying to view this. And the default is that it will order it by title in ascending order. So now let's look at what this does. So let's go ahead and just set something up real quick here. We'll pop a headline in here. Just kidding, let's go ahead and shrink that down. We'll pop a headline in here. And we will, let's turn this whole column into our consumer. And there we go. Let's go ahead and delete those. Click on our first headline. And let's just make this the post title. 
So now what we're gonna need is our controls. Now, you could add these anywhere on the page. I'm going to go ahead and just create another section here. And within this section, I am going to create four columns. I'm going to list each of these buttons out so that you can actually see them individually and how they work. And we are just going to very quickly create our sorting buttons. So let's go ahead and do this uh, alphabetical ascending. Now you'd probably want to, you know, style these and give them graphics and all of that fun stuff, but alphabetical ascending, descending, date ascending, and date descending. There we go. Um, now, how do we get these to control this here? Well, what we're going to do is have these pass values into our URL. Um, and we'll look at what that is uh, or how that works in a second. Um, but we're basically going to have it pass a query string into the URL that then our looper provider is looking for specific parameters and it will change the dynamic content in our looper provider, which then the looper consumer will display what we're looking for or the order that we're looking for. So let's take alphabetical ascending, for example, and right here in the URL uh, field, we are going to add question mark and our order by um, parameter that we specified here was order by. So let's put that in and we'll say order by equals title because this is alphabetical. And since this is ascending, we'll say and our order parameter that we want you to add to the URL equals ascending. So no dynamic content here, just order by or whatever your parameter key is that you choose. Um, and they're completely arbitrary. You could, I mean, this could be anything as long as it matches what you have in the dynamic content key um, in your looper provider. So order by title and order equals ascending. Great. Let's copy that, go to our descending, paste it in here. And the only thing we're going to uh, edit is our ascending. We'll change that to DESC descending. Okay, perfect. Let's jump over to date ascending. So order by equals. Now we want to change title to date. So order by equals date and order equals ascending. Perfect. And then we'll jump over to our descending date and order by equals date and order equals descending. Perfect. So again, this is pretty simple. We just have four sorting fields here. So let's see how these work on the front end. So I'm actually going to show you our URL here so you can kind of see what's going on. Our default dashboard is just dashboard. But then when we click on and you can kind of see things are in default alphabetical ascending order here. Uh, but now if we click on alphabetical descending, look at what that button did to our query string. So up top, it now added question mark order by equals title and order equals descending, which is exactly what we told that button to do. And that now changed the dynamic values in our looper provider, which now show des descending alphabetical order. So if I click on ascending, boom. If I click on descending, boom. I click on date, boom, and date descending, boom. So as I've mentioned, this is simply scratching the surface of how powerful the combination of loopers, consumers, and parameters can be. Uh, there's clearly so many different ways that you guys can expand upon this in your builds. But as always, hopefully you found this tutorial useful. If so, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and let me know what other kinds of videos you'd like to see in the future. In the meantime, build on and I will see you guys in the next video.